some more soap. This is place that will be fun and happy Easter. In celebration of Easter, I will be responding to the Nostalgia Critics Hop Review. I have been waiting all fucking gear for this. Now I personally love Hop and he hates this movie. But keep one thing in mind. The main purpose of this video is not to defend the movie Hop. The main purpose of the video is to talk about how good the review is. You know, like most of my video thoughts episodes work. With that all being said, let's dive in. Well, it's around Easter time, and you know what that means? A lot of movies about a certain furry, long-eared, buck-toothed bunny rabbit who has a thing for eggs. I'm, of course, talking about Jesus. Hmm, that's interesting. I didn't know that Jesus had bunny ears. That's news to me. Yeah, this is the time when a lot of Christ films start making the rounds. The funny thing about Jesus movies, before they actually became funny things, is when it comes to Christmas, they're usually shared with other Christmas-type movies. You know, about Santa Claus or family togetherness or helping the poor and hungry get work. But that's not how Easter works. Easter is prominently Jesus' cinematic time to shine, whether for better or Gibson. I don't really have a problem with this, as a lot of these movies hold up pretty well, many of them cinematic classics. But it is strange that one of the most popular holiday mascots doesn't have many cinematic movies about him. There's plenty of TV specials and maybe an occasional appearance here or there. Some more balls to the wall insane than others. Okay, I will let you guys to the clip play, so I have something to say about the point of a role. But before I do, there's one thing that I want to point out. The Stata Critic, please review that movie. That would be so fucking awesome. Note to self, must add to Q. But entire films based on one of our favorite breaking and entering icons are surprisingly far and few. To be honest, I think it fucking sucks that there are so few movies about the Easter Bunny. And movies are the only form of media where something about Easter is lacking. I can think of a Spongebob or a Simpsons episode at the top of my head that's dedicated to Easter. And both shows have episodes connected to nearly every fucking holiday. I mean, I'm sure there could be episodes related to Easter in some Simpsons or Spongebob episodes, but I can think of any and I've seen a lot of them. Come on, Critic. I'll take you to my factory. <sighs> Characters. However, will we get to the Easter factory from this, our studio? Through the magic of magic doors. Magic! Wow! How unbelievably imaginative and or magical! I have to admit, the way this factory looks is beyond fucking awesome. Now come on, Critic. We gotta get you ready to be the ultimate Easter Bunny. Well, I'm sure I'm gonna have some slip-ups along the way, but if I only believe in myself, I know I can not only save Easter, but also have some hilarious hijinks along the way. Holy shit, that speech is great. It's hard to explain exactly what makes it so great, but it definitely is the best part about this skit. Which isn't saying a lot because, well, just you wait. So... Aren't you gonna, like, show me how to use magic and make candy and stuff? No, we mostly just sit around while I tell you what not to do. Oh, don't do that. Alright, here's my biggest issue with this kit. It's fucking boring! I mean, seriously, who the hell wants to see the nostalgia critic sitting on his couch doing nothing? There's nothing even remotely funny or entertaining about that. All it does is waste time. Now look, I don't hate the skits in the Nostalgia Critic show as much as so many people do. Usually, they're at least funny or interesting. But the skits in this video aren't. Oh no, don't do that either. Why the hell are you even listening to that bunny? You're a grown ass man. Do what you want. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense. That Bernie isn't in the Celtic Critics boss or anything. He's just some random fucking Bernie that came to his house out of nowhere. So the Celtic Critic doing what he says makes absolutely no sense. Oh, I know, your flannel shirt. It wouldn't be a cool Easter movie without your flannel shirt. There, now you're hip. And remember, keep smiling. Not that much. Oh my god, that Bernie is such a fucking cunt. I hope something bad happens to him by the end of the video. Is this all we're gonna do? We're just gonna sit around a room while you tell me things not to do? Of course not. Oh, well that's, there's a cut to something disappointing, isn't it? We're there? gonna sit in a car while I tell you what not to do. I see no whimsy in this. This is whimsy-less. Well, you've got your flannel shirt. And do you know how to play the drums? Not really. Ow! 
Ow! Learn how to play the drums. You're the Easter Bunny, for God's sake. What does any of this have to do with Easter? I don't know, but it made Hop a ton of money. What is it? Hop in the back seat? You know what we're doing. Yeah, I know what we're doing. All right, I do get the main point you're trying to establish with this skit. I really do. Though you could have established that point in a much less boring way. The point that you're trying to get across is that it has barely to do with Easter. There's a lot of the scenes don't focus on Easter specifically. I'm sorry, but the point you're trying to establish is incredibly stupid. First of all, you're fucking wrong. Every scene focuses on E.P who's the son of the Easter Bunny, which is alone proof that it has fucking everything to do with Easter. But even ignoring that, there are many Christmas movies that are widely considered good, which you could make a similar argument about. Even though it's a wonderful life, it's widely considered a Christmas movie. It focuses more on how depressed a guy is and how he has a hard life. Elf is without shadow of doubt a Christmas movie. However, it's mainly about a guy from the North Pole who is trying desperately to impress his father and nothing seems to work. A story like that can literally take place at any time during the year. If we ignore the fact that he is from the North Pole and is instead from another country, we would pretty much have the same fucking movie. As for Arthur Christmas, there are many times where it feels more like a spy movie than a Christmas movie. But it still is, without you to adopt a Christmas movie. Now, of course, I'm not saying that your point is stupid because it applies to many other movies. That would be naive of me. My main problem is, of course, that you're wrong. But it's still amazing to me how you made this point, not realizing that a similar point can't be made to watch a lot of Christmas movies. It lacks any kind of imagination, wonder, and creativity that would be associated with such a timeless icon. If you don't think this movie is creative, that's fine, you're entitled to your opinion. But I personally disagree. I think there is a lot of creativity with this movie. Especially since this is one of the very few movies that are actually about the Easter Bunny, which you made clear earlier. So there isn't much to compare this movie to. Now of course there are other reasons why I find the movie creative, but we'd be here all fucking day. So how long before there's an egg pun in this movie? Literally the first frame! Even Egghead needs a few moments to set up. This is an alternative opening logo. A lot of movies have that, including ones that are widely considered to be good. I'm sorry, but complaining about the opening logo is such a major nitpick. I mean seriously, who fucking cares? This is something that most people don't even think about when watching movies. Not even a minute in and we already have funny boobies. I expected more from the director of Garfield 2, Alvin and the Chipmunks and Grumpy Cat's Worst Christmas- OH GOD THIS IS GONNA SUCK! Okay, if you don't like these movies, that's fine. Out of those, the only one which I do hate are the Alvin and the Chipmunks movies. I think Garfield 2 is a good movie and I haven't seen the third one that you mentioned. But there is something that I wanna address. It's not specifically at you, the nostalgia critic, but more so aimed at people who criticize this movie back in 2011 when it was in theaters. A lot of people thought that the movie was gonna suck because it's from the same guy who directed the first Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. That is dumb. You can't judge a movie by its director. If you do, that just goes to show how fucking close-minded you are. For example, I think Paul W. Anderson is the worst director of all time. With that all being said, I still think Mortal Kombat is one of the greatest video game movies of all time. Considering how few there are that are actually good exist, that's not really much of a competition. We get a brief glance of the Easter bunnies of the past, and I already want to know more about them than the Thumper equivalent of Quack Pack. Stop taking notes, Disney! Ha <laughs> ha, I'm still gonna make it. Now know that you hate Quack Pack. You've mentioned that many times in your videos. That is fine. Even though I personally like it, I have no issue with you hating that show. That's not my problem. My problem is that you're implying that EP is like who would do and Louie, which is so obviously not fucking true. For one thing, EP is a lot more mature than who would do and Louie are, which makes sense. Who would do and Louie are teenagers in Quack Pack while EP is an adult. Again, to the film's credit, this is kind of an inventive idea. A human being as an Easter Bunny has a lot of possibilities. I like how you're pointing out positive aspects of the movie as well. That shows that you are being fair and not biased. And even with the lame pun setting of Easter Island. Get it? Because Christmas! I don't get it. What does the Easter Island have to do with Christmas? 
I know that you're trying to make a point here, I guess, but I don't understand what that point might be. And hey, this is an Illumination movie. Shouldn't there be some obnoxious dick donut hole stealing way too much screen time? Too long have we labored under the yoke of the bony's tyranny. How do you think they come up with these inspired comedic designs? Uh, yellow dot! Put a face on it. Brilliant! Uh, orange dot! Put a face on it. Brilliant! Uh, yellow dot again! Put a face on it. Brilliant! So the Illumination movies have a common theme. So? I really don't see how that's an issue. A lot of movies made by the same company have common themes that are in most of the movies. Let's talk about the animated Disney movies from the past as an example. It's very common that there is a comic relief in those movies. With the Hunchback of Notre Dame, it was the Gargoyles. With Mulan, it was the Lizard. And even though Phil Lopez was a serious trainer for the most part, in Hercules, there are still some moments that were meant to be comedic. In Pocahontas, it was the two paths. I could go on all fucking day. My point is, it's common for companies to have a common theme in their movies. I really don't see the issue with that. He apparently still lives at home with his family. How'd that job interview go? Don't know if it's really what I'm looking for. Did they pay money? Then it's exactly what you've been looking for. Look, you keep dying in franchises. You need backup employment! Hold on, are you saying that Gary Cole keeps dying in franchises? Because I have seen several of his movies, and he didn't die in any of them. Even then, nobody dies in this particular movie. So even as a joke, it makes no sense. When I was a crack and heroin addict, I made some unusual decisions. They included dressing in an inappropriate way on September the 11th. Now before I talk about this, remember, I was on crack and heroin. Man, that shit is hilarious! He be literally bumps into Fred, who realizes there's only one way to put him and the audience out of its misery. Don't you worry, little friend. I'm gonna end your suffering. <sighs> ha! Remember when your dad hit that cute animal, kids? Now you know this also probably happened. Ha! I mean, compared to some other PG or G-rated movies, this isn't that dark. Mufasa's death in The Lion King, the original animated one, I hate that they have to make that distinction now, is far fucking darker than this. No! EB talks and Frank can't believe his agent, I mean eyes. Who said that? Your latest victim? I could just, maybe, come live with you for a couple of months. You know why I can't take this bunny seriously? Outside of that. Okay, there is a problem that I have that I need to address. Mind you, this is not a new problem. It has been a problem with your reviews, even during the early years of the Nostalgia Critic. But I need to address this. Why do you include text that only appears on screen for a few fucking milliseconds? I mean seriously, there's no point in this. I have to pause the video to be able to read the text. But this bullshit, it shouldn't be happening. If you want to have text in your videos, one of the most important aspects is to have the text on screen for long enough so you can actually fucking read it. I shouldn't have to pause a video in order to be able to read the fucking text. But alright, I am gonna address a few of the things that you say in this text. Why the hell do you care who voices him? You're essentially saying that he's a bad character because of his voice. Do I really need to explain why that's a problem? It also doesn't help that you have made fun of how Arnold Schwarzenegger sounds, which is his real voice, and it is a very dick move. Yeah, I'm still on that. As for no personality? Are you fucking kidding me? He has a lot of personality. He's naive, doesn't want to become the Easter Bunny, and he's very passionate about drums. How can you sit there and tell me that he has no personality? I don't know who the hell the Velvet Rabbit is, so I can't comment on that. Also, even though I will agree that the Despicable Me movies are the best from the only mention studio. It's not the first one, that one absolutely fucking sucks. I don't agree they are the only Illumination movies with good characters. He looks so generic and uninteresting, I keep expecting him to sell me car insurance at any moment. Wait, what? That makes no damn sense. Does he even remotely look like a car salesman? No, he doesn't. So I'm not sure how that could get into your mind. So if you want to save 15% by switching to Geico, do the Gecko dance down to your nearest location. Here's a talking hamburger the animator did in his spare time. I'm gonna get my own movie and or TV show too. He is... Ah! <laughs>
<laughs> this made me laugh so much. But there is a problem with this joke though. Why do you just start a sentence just to drop it? I mean you end this joke with an ace, but nothing you say after that connects. I'm sorry but I find it very problematic when people use incomplete sentences in their videos. Is there something you'd rather eat, you weird little thing? But, well, uh... You wanna eat rabbit? Okay, I'm not gonna lie, it is incredibly fucking awkward that he shakes his tail like that. And it's not much different from if someone would shake his ears. Which means that there is a sexual reference in a kid's movie. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that is pretty fucking creepy. Fred tries to get rid of him, but E.B. tries playing up a guilt trip. Do you want me to look for some baby aspirin? Or? No, no, you, you say that you, you might run over a baby. Ha! Now you're thinking about babies getting run over. Ha. Okay, I will admit, the movie actually is a bit darker than I originally thought. Thank you, Nostalgia Critic, for making me realize that. It's a place for you to stay. Oh, I understand. I'll just sleep down here, among my poo and pee. Okay, I better do a count of lines we all know the real Russell Brand said. I like that counter, I do. It's fucking awesome. Though there's one thing I must point out. An actor acting similar in most movies that he's in is common with most actors. It's due with Jim Carrey, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Samuel Jackson, Will Smith. I could go on all fucking day. So this isn't really that surprising. It looks like EB uses too many bubbles in the hot tub though, and yeah, I haven't seen this before. My sister's gonna kill me! You know what this film is? It's a bad school cafeteria of bland scenes you've seen a million times in other movies. Okay, you want that scene where somebody gets messy and a lot of bubbles? There you go. You want that scene with two people arguing until they figure out they have a lot in common? There she goes. You want it to be so boring you'll forget it even entered you? <laughs> Don't get married. Okay, sure, I will give you that. This movie has a lot of cliches. But how exactly is that a bad thing? Movies have existed since fucking 1906. And nearly everything has been overturned to death in movies. It's nearly impossible to make a movie without including a lot of cliches. Hell, a lot of movies, widely regarded as great, have many cliches in them as well. I'm getting the impression that you think the movie having a lot of cliches is one of the reasons why it sucks. Which is dumb. Fred decides he's had enough of Peter Cotton twat and decides to put him in a box and get rid of him. Tell me about the Lennies, George. All right, come on, out. We're releasing you into the wild. No, no, put the bunny back in the box and throw him off a cliff. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. That's going way too far. I guess that you don't like the character, that's fine. But what's the worst thing he has done? Being a bit annoying to you? That's not a valid justification for wanting a character to die. Unless a character is a legitimately bad person, which EP really isn't, there's no justification for wanting the character to fucking die. Fred finally puts together that he's the Easter Bunny! You know, he confused him for all the other talking rabbits he came across in his life. I mean, it's perfectly reasonable that he would remember that. This was a very significant event in his life. Why are you here now? Oh, just doing a little last minute recon for Easter deliveries. Finding ideal egg hiding locations. Oh, there's one, that's perfect. This is trying to look like one of those films you see mocked in other films. Like they look real, but they're just too lame to actually exist. You know, like George Simmons in Merman, or Jeff Portnoy in The Fatties, or Will Smith in Aladdin. It really is said when the nostalgia critic has to rehearse the same point he made about other movies. Oh, are you writing a novel? What's that about? A crippled soldier who in the future goes to another planet and he becomes one of the indigenous people who are blue and live in the forest. That's not Avatar? Not really. That's funny. The actual pitch for Avatar went exactly the same way. It's about a modern person who befriends a tribe and finds that environment is good, but modern people are bad. That's not Dances with Wolves, Ferngully, Pocahontas, and a dozen after-school specials? Not really. Take all our money. Cool. Now, I am willing to admit something about Avatar. When I first saw it back in 2009, I used to think it was the best movie of that year. But I didn't rewatch it once after the year was over. I wasn't even interested when I got it on DVD or Blu-ray. Don't remember which, I don't collect either anymore. 
The fact that I was never interested in rewatching it outside the purpose of research proves to me that maybe it wasn't as good as I thought it was. And yes, it was very fucking unoriginal. And I was dumb back then for trying to make the argument that it's not unoriginal. EB stumbles into a recording booth that just happens to have a completely blind band called the Blind Boys of Alabama. Okay, if there's any good that came out of this movie, it's that forced me to Google this band to see if it exists. It does, and by God, I want to know their story. But I'm glad the movie at least gave you that. I feel a similar way when I watch a movie for the purpose of research for a video thoughts episode on a review or other types of videos that discuss movies. Even if the review itself is bad, if one of the movies that I had to watch for the purpose of research is fucking awesome, and it's a movie that I haven't watched before, I'm all fucking for it! It's great! Okay, it's cool seeing this kick-ass band play, but this scene is so awkward, I keep expecting it to be like a fake intro to the movie A Series of Unfortunate Events. You know, the one telling you this mindless, sappy bullshit isn't the actual film you're gonna watch. I've never seen this movie, or TV special, or whatever the hell it is. But despite that, I still think that this is a good point, and I totally get what you mean. This is what I love about the nostalgia critic. Even if I'm not familiar with whatever he's referencing, I still can understand his points perfectly fine. That's so great about the nostalgia critic, both back in his early years and the more modern years. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that this is not the movie you will be watching. The movie you are about to see is extremely unpleasant. What the hell just happened? I mean seriously, it wasn't funny, it wasn't informative, it wasn't entertaining, it wasn't interesting. There was just a whole lot of nothing. Don't pull that with me, Rabbit, okay? You're destined to do something great, I just know it. You'll find an awesome job. Hey, remember when they said this was going to be about a man becoming the Easter Bunny? If they meant just sitting around and talking in cars, then Jerry Seinfeld and James Corden should be looking like Ralphie from A Christmas Story by this point! I'm sorry, but this joke seems very misplaced. At this point in the movie, Fred hasn't brought up yet that he wants to become the Easter Bunny. Wouldn't it make more sense to make this joke when it's more relevant to what's happening in the movie? I think I used to be quite lazy when I was signing on and taking drugs the whole time. Although being a drug addict can be quite taxing, you have to get the money for the drugs, then you have to get the drug. Both of those things can be troubling. <laughs> this is the third time in this review. When I interjected just to laugh, that just goes to show that the nostalgia critic still is as funny as ever. Tired of boring shots of just the two of them talking? Well, don't worry, here's a crane shot of the two of them talking! We needed a crane shot for that! Honestly, I don't get your point. If this was a dialogue-driven movie, I would understand. But there isn't a single talking scene in this movie that lasts for more than a minute. So complaining about the fact that there is too much talking in this movie makes absolutely no sense. There are far more events going on in this movie than there is talking. <laughs> Hello, husband. Stamp! Alright, there is an issue that I have with the art that I have to address. It goes for nearly three fucking minutes, which is far too long. Now look, I don't have an issue with you having ads in your videos. That's totally fine. You need money to put roof over your head after all. My issue is that there is no reason why an ad in the middle of the video should drag out for as long as it did. An ad should be half a minute at most. There's no reason for an ad to drag out for any longer than that. I mean sure, I can skip it. But you don't have to skip a fucking ad in order to be able to enjoy the rest of the video. Don't eat that. Fred, relax. Watermelon. It tastes E. coli-ish, but it's still better than Harry Potter jelly beans. I think you're taking the fact that E.P. shits candy way too fucking literally. I mean, yes, if you think about that it comes from his ears, it can come across as disgusting. However, what you fail to take into account is that his ears is no ordinary ears. It's a fucking magical ears. So he is able to shit candy that tastes perfectly fine. It's not realistic, I will give you that. But then again, this is a fucking fantasy movie. It's not supposed to be realistic. If you take the real world into account, this wouldn't make sense. However, if you take into account that this movie takes place in a fictional universe, it actually fucking does. 
They go to the talent show where he keeps E.B. hidden in a bag only to have him come out and talk in front of everyone. This was written in a day. Relax. I mean, maybe, but just because it is written in a day doesn't necessarily mean that it won't be good. I'm gonna use myself as an example. Not necessarily of being able to write something good within a day, but instead the fact that I am able to watch a movie and review it within a day. And most of the times I make a good review and don't screw up at all. By the way, I'm not stating my own opinion here. I'm stating the opinion of my audience. I'll give you a good intro, I'll set you up and you knock them down. Yeah? Yeah! Really? Mm-hmm. Thank you, friend. No problem. You think James Marsden meets up with Neil Patrick Harris once a year to share their war stories of working on Hop and Smurfs? The compromise is they meet on Easter, but they have to take a shot of something blue. Enjoy your meetups. I know you need them. Okay, I've been watching you for a lot of years. From this comment and many other comments that you make about these Smurfs, I get the impression that you fucking hate these Smurfs. Mind you, I'm not saying it absolutely is the case. In fact, I might be wrong, but I get that impression. Which, to be fair, I don't have a problem with. You are, of course, entitled to your opinion. But this is something that I started noticing now, and I find that pretty interesting. I didn't like it. I loved it! You want that scene where a guy looks like he hates something, but actually he really likes it? <laughs> Take it and never have kids! Okay, fine. This is a cliché. But how exactly is it poorly executed here? Like I said, clichés aren't inherently bad. It would help if you explained that the clichés in this movie are poorly executed. But you don't do that. You instead say that the cliches are bad and leave it at that. Which gives me no idea as to why you hate those cliches. Darling, darling, no, you can't serve that. Not without the special garnish. <laughs> Tastes worse than it smells. <laughs> Oh boy, a piss joke. Now I don't find this disgusting. It takes a lot to disgust me. And you would have to do a lot more than that to accomplish that. But my problem here is that this is just pointless and unfunny. I'm convinced the car is gonna be the Easter Bunny by the end of this. What? That makes no damn sense. Is this your new career? Upstaging grade schoolers with your ventriloquist puppet? No, no, no. I got lots of other stuff going on. Am I not supposed to side with the dad? Because I'm really siding with the dad. Can you give me just one reason not to be disappointed? Oh, come on. He... Nope, not a thing. This movie's terrible. I mean, didn't the little sister say she was really looking forward to it? The teacher picked her to be, like, the big singing role? They usually cast a boy as Peter Cottontail, but they made an exception for me on account of my singing voice is so strong. Oh. And, yeah, for whatever reason her singing sucks, that doesn't really make sense, but why start now in this movie? Regardless, this asshole still comes up and just ruins her pageant. And he doesn't make it up to her or anything. She just has to live with it, and he's rewarded for some reason. This movie is just... Shit! But it's not Fred's fault what happened. Hell, it is not even Eepy's fault. This was a desperate situation. If everyone in the audience knew that this really was a talking rabbit, they would be very fucking shocked and think that they went fucking insane. So they had to do something to trick them into thinking that this wasn't really a talking rabbit. Ha! You know what? I just hate everything. Like, everything. You know, this makes me think of I hate everything. Thank you for bringing that to my mind. And I really mean that. He is a damn good raptor. Pink Berets find the mansion though and E.B. tries to fool them by making it look like Fred cooked him before leaving him to the slaughter. What about Fred? Oh, he'll be alright. Humans can grow their testicles back, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Even as a fan of the movie, I still think this was a very cunty move on E.B.'s part. There was really no reason for him to fake his death to get his friend Fred into trouble. He really should know better. I know he feels regret for that, but there is no reason why he should have done it in the fucking first place. I mean, I get that he didn't want to be caught by those bunnies, but this was not the way to go about it at all. Honestly, hiding would have been a better option. I mean, sure, they would find him eventually, 
But at least that way, Fred's life wouldn't be in danger. Which is far more important to think about than fucking fame. Actually, the more I look at them, the more they look like Officer Hops. And this is called Hop. What if this is all a prequel to Zootopia? Two critters can talk, they get organized, they handle Easter, 12 monkeys happens, and the animals rule the earth. Pieces were in front of us the whole time, we just really had to hate this movie to see them. I'm sorry, but your theory makes absolutely no sense. The biggest problem, of course, is that Hop was released long before Zootopia and by a totally different fucking studio. So it's literally impossible that the makers of the movie could have Zootopia in mind. But ignoring that, the universe of Hop and Zootopia are completely different. The only connection that they have is that they are both about talking animals. Now I don't have a problem with making a theory based on something that's not from the movie. A theory like that can work if it at least makes sense. But this theory really doesn't. Fred could be in real trouble. Now, I find no, a good No, it's not the jitters, David. Why is he moving like a malfunctioning animatronic? I find it. It's not the jitters, David. Go to him. Go to him. Okay, I will admit, I find this joke funny. But what I don't get is the point you're trying to make with this joke. How the hell can you even connect this to robots? That makes no damn sense. By the power vested in me, I pronounce E.B. and Fred O'Hare co-Easter bunnies. They'll have an apartment in Boys Town, sing show tunes at bars, and watch endless hours of Antique Roadshow. Or Fred could just be doing his fucking job. I mean, he clearly saw in the movie that he was fucking passionate about wanting to become the Easter Bunny. So what makes you think that he wouldn't do his job correctly? With E.P., sure, I can kinda see that. Does he cares more about drums than he cares about becoming the Easter Bunny. But with Fred? Come on! And you still haven't learned to play the drums. How do you expect to sit around and whimsically do nothing when you still have stuff to do? Hop to it! <laughs> I said the thing. <laughs> Please shoot that cunt, he has it coming. You just grab this basket, you wave your hand in front of the door and it'll take you to the magic Easter place. This guy named Carriages will fill you in. Thank you, Critic. I promise I won't let you down. It's gonna do a good job. Okay, I predict that he isn't gonna get there and will instead get in a regular fucking room. has finally come true. Long live eternal misery. As it turns out, I was wrong. The doors lead to the factory after all. The fact that something unpredictable happened definitely is a good thing. Though, to be fair, I probably should have expected that since this is a fucking magical creature as well. Uh, <clears throat> sorry to interrupt. I know you have your hands full. Uh, you don't know where carrot juice is, do you? Oh, I caramelized him. Over there. Wow, this is so fucking awesome. That motherfucker hated it coming. Remember, Doc, keep smiling. <laughs> so, use the box Bunny parody to give this guy a taste of his own medicine. Fucking awesome. You couldn't have ended this episode on a better note. Now it's time for my overall thoughts. Hop. It's a movie that I watch every Easter and I never get tired of it. I think it's fucking awesome and the best Easter movie out there. But like the nostalgia critic established, it's the only Easter movie out there. And I agree with him that it really sucks. That there is only one notable Easter movie I mean. As for this review, well, it's a nostalgia critic episode that I see myself rewatching years from now starting this year. Yeah, it's really that fucking great. Even though I disagree with most of his points, I still find his points very understandable and fair. So yeah, this review is fucking awesome. Just like how it has been a tradition of mine for years to rewatch the Nostalgia Critic episode of the 2000 Grants movie. I'm doing the exact same fucking thing with this video. You are the end of the video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.